Today, we're gonna to have an interview with David Lobenberg. He's a portrait painter and creator of the California Vibe School of Watercolor, and you can learn with him online. I've taken classes with him. He's tremendously generous and giving, and you will have your experience changed and see things differently after working with him. Let's get started. And if you would consider, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel because YouTube loves a thumbs up. Now let's take a look at some of David's work. And I want to express that his, all of his links are going to be in the description below. So if you want to check out his YouTube, his Instagram, his Facebook, as well as all the various classes that he does online and, non per and in person, that's where you can access them. And they are a tremendous value. Now here are some examples of his work. And if you are watching a uh, Portrait Artist of the Year with me, or Artist of the Year with me, then you know that there are many painters who are going partially into the territory that David is in, in terms of color value swap outs, or what he likes to call messing around. But sometimes they don't go, commit completely to getting there, which is fine. You know, everything uh, can be a hybrid. Nothing has to be an absolute. But what I've noticed when it does not work well is when they do not make the value uh, uh, swaps as efficiently as they need to. And it's not just about inserting a different color to be innovative. The value has to be correct. If the value isn't correct, then the whole image will fall apart. Just imagine if the values were not correct on any one of these images that you're seeing here. It would just look like a kaleidoscope of shapes. So you have to master your values. So today we have David Lobenberg, who I have admired for an incredibly long amount of time because he's one of the first people that I saw who did a color value swap out and it didn't matter. There was, you read color when they, you can see behind him, you can see his portraits and many of them have no flesh color in them at all, but your brain says, yeah, I accept this. There's no barrier. So, um, so David, thank you for coming and um, oh, you're welcome. And talking about your approach to portrait, a little bit within the context of Portrait Artist of the Year, which is what my audience is so interested in. So first, maybe tell them a little bit about who you are, because many of them are in the UK. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've uh, I've been painting for. As long as I can remember, I had my first watercolor lesson when I was about 15 years of age. I was totally smitten with the uh, the medium. And uh, and then I went to college. I uh, have my master's degree in fine art from UCLA. Um, I went into the graphic design business because, after all, I had to earn a living. Um, I was in that for many years. I met my wife in Los Angeles, and we had a graphic design business there. We moved up to Sacramento, and it was in Sacramento that I started to incorporate my painting abilities into graphic design projects. I actually was, for a little while, a commercial illustrator. Uh, and the person that has influenced me the most was the late, great Charles Reed. I love the way he was able to capture a portrait, but at the same time, he was a messy painter. Yeah. He enjoyed yeah. runs. He enjoyed splatters. Um, so I started to paint like him. I, 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 I probably have purchased every book and, and, and uh, VHS and DVD that I ever put out. But at some point, and this is about maybe 10, 12 years ago, okay, I learned all that. I'm getting kind of bored with, because he did paint in natural, somewhat, pretty much natural colors. That was his thing. Um, and he painted from life. So I've always painted from photographs. I'm kind of like Ted Nuttall. He, he does that too. Hmm. You can capture instant uh, um impressions that way you you, you know with, with with somebody sitting still uh, that's the way the watercolor is going to come out so I, I also like to capture 
facial expressions, all sorts of different angles and so forth. So I started playing with that. And then I started playing with using expressive colors. Uh, and I was having such a success with that. I was getting my work uh, displayed in articles about me, both here in the United States and in Europe. I've, I've been in Watercolor Magazine. I've been in... Um, I th the Art of Watercolor, which is a, a French publication, uh, international artists, publications like that. Um, so what I learned that I could do is that as long as I follow the value pattern that I saw across the face and the head structure, and again, I work from, I work from photographs, yeah. I could use any colors I want. And that's what I started preaching because I've been teaching my, oh, and I named my style California Vibe Watercolor Portraiture. And that caught on. And, um, and I, I, I've been teaching across the United States for about eight years now. So I would tell my students, listen, all you got to do is follow the value pattern, but you can substitute and you call it swapping. I love that term. Um, but it's not as easy as it sounds. And I was getting frustrated in my workshops because the greater number of people taking the workshops, they were having a blast, but the colors weren't the best. They just weren't unified and they didn't, they often weren't pleasant looking. They just didn't work well together. So that always bothered me. Now, what, what I would do is, and I would tell them, well, as you go across the face and the values, when you switch from one color to another color, try and do an analogous color in between. So I tried to work with analogous colors. So if, I, if I'm on uh, uh, part of the face that, say, is orange, then I would, I would go to yellow and then progress to red. Um, that was the general idea. I am not a color theorist. I do it intuitively. But then about five years ago, maybe less, I came up with another way to teach that I called the mess around. An homage to John Candy's role in planes, trains, and automobiles. And he starred with Steve Martin. I'm not going to go into the details, but okay. it was an homage to to his role in that film. And what the mess around is, yeah. you don't even have to have your, your subject drawn onto your paper yet. You can do this on blank paper. You lay down primarily primary colors. My basic palette is opera, alizarin red, or anything that comes close to alizarin red, Cad yellow, or anything that comes close to cad yellow, ultramarine blue, green shade, and cobalt blue. Yeah. Or you could use Prussian blue as a, uh, if you want to substitute for thalo blue, green shade. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, and so what you do, and I, you know, I, ha I have demos up the kazoo on my YouTube channel. learn with him online and i can attest from taking classes with him that not only is he a very generous teacher online but he answers every darn question you have and he will respond to every single image that you send him and let me tell you that's a little bit rare when it comes to the online world go ahead okay oh yeah i'm 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 into teaching yeah. And, and I really want to get my, my, my California vibe style across to people, and I want to see them succeed and learn and progress. Yes, that, that comes across very clearly uh, for myself when I, my experience of you was exactly that. I could feel it in the sense that, wow, he wants it as much as I do, if not more, which is, <laughs> yes. I think that's a, a sign of a really, really dedicated teacher. And, and we all know that in the art world, sometimes there are teachers who are guarded and want to keep some secrets, you know? Oh, and yes. That's not what you're about. And so I really nope, encourage nope. people. And we're talking, uh, uh, David is also not just a portrait painter, but we're talking within the context of uh, 
the, the particular program that, that I've been recapping. And that's, that's, um, that's the primary interest of the people that are watching right now. There, can, yeah. I can, I, let me finish up with the mess around. Yes, please. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. No, no, that's okay. So what the mess around is with those yeah, mess around. colors and on, a, on just a empty sheet of watercolor paper, you can put down yellow, uh, you know, red opera or alizarin red, um, phthalo blue. And then I take out a spritzer. You can even do it with your brush. You can do this wet on wet and wet on dry. And, and before those patches of color dry, you just spritz away, you lift the paper, you know, you let you let all these colors flow, mix, intermingle, and then, uh, but they cannot go past mid value. They cannot go past mid value. Ooh. And then you let that dry. And you have this beautiful, what I call melange of color. Then you trace your portrait on top of that. You don't care where hi hi highlights are. You don't care where you think you need to save the white of the paper. It has oh. nothing to do with that. Oh. I tell my students, you're as free as a bird. That's tough for them. Yeah. That's tough for people to do. Um, but I get them to do that. And then after that's all dry and the tracings on that, that melange of color, yes. we go into our primarily into our mid to dark values and we bring out the volume and the features of our subject. We emerge our subject from the mess around and that has oh. really helped. So that that's, that's all I want to say about that, but it's an important, as far as me teaching, uh, that was an, an important milestone. Well, yeah, that's super important. I mean, one of the things that I think you just told me that I'm hearing is um, you're, you're not working from the white of the paper. And uh, I, my, my, uh, you know, my tagline is keep the white to your paper white and your paints wet. You know, because we all know once in watercolor, once you lose your whites, you can't get them back. And I'm not interested in using masking fluid or any of that, that stuff. I'm not either. So, um, but what I picked up by, with the main takeaway for me from what, from what you just said, and this is because I've had more than this one experience with you, because there's lots of takeaways, which is don't let those initial blasts of wash that are put down be any darker than mid-tone super important to preserve. The right, right. Yeah, you're right. And you have to keep on moving. You when you lay down those different splashes of color, don't let them dry. They'll attach yeah. the fiber. Yes. As soon as that's done. So you got to move along. As yeah. soon as that's done, you, you, you got to take out that spritzer or your brush and, and, and move them all together and mix and mingle them. Mm -hmm. And if you want to leave some whites of the paper, you don't have to cover every square inch. But yep. the whites just end up where they end up. They have nothing to do where you think a highlight should be. Understood. Yeah. Okay. And just to clarify, you don't get involved with any masking fluid or, um, yeah. Okay. That's what I, I mean. It's, I would assume that looking at what you do, that that would be the case. And, and so, yes. Uh, yeah, I very much uh, agree with that as well. So Mona Pagler a viewer had the question of how do you come up with such original ideas for your paintings? I'm not, I'm sure you've okay, been okay. that question before. Uh, oh yeah, many times. Okay. Um, you want to, you want to start, you, you, you want to put your best foot forward. And the way you do that is if you're going to take photographs of your subject, obviously you're not going to have them look at the camera face on uh, and, and, and smile. Um, I mean, they could smile, but you want to go in it, pretend like you're a cinematographer. You want to get angles. You want to maybe get some emotion. Uh, you want to play around with dramatic light. That's what you want to do. Yeah. Another thing that you can do, and, and I'll, I'll do a little advertise, advertising for them. They don't pay me anything. I just love to use them. There is an app out there called Museum by Sketchy. Okay. You, you, people will take photographs of themselves either individually or in groups. Yeah. And they'll 
they'll upload them on this, onto mu this museum app 24-7, 365 uh, days a year. And, and they allow you to pull those photographs, you know, onto your, your desktop and eventually do a painting. That's the cool thing about this app. So that's another way. So mo most most of what they post are pretty boring, but but some of them are quite inventive with their poses, with their lighting, with uh, the angle that the photograph was taken. So that's another way to start out on the right foot. Yeah, that brings up something really interesting because in order to be on this program, you have to submit a self-portrait of yourself. That's how you get judged into the program. So it's fascinating okay. for me to watch because there are certain tropes when it comes to um, doing a self-portrait. And one of the tropes, I think, at this point probably is uh, painting yourself looking in a mirror. It's... <laughs> right. Okay, you smile because you, you know what I'm talking about. So I find... Yeah. Fascinating to see how people decide, you know, there are two things involved here. One is how you want to be portrayed, how do you want to be seen, and also what is maybe a unique or different way of presenting yourself. But I think one of the things right. that really interests me about what you do, especially when I've, if I was just to singularly think about your self-portraits, is I've seen many self-portraits of you. And you're not hiding behind any kind of contextual cuteness, if you know what I mean. No. But you do change the, what you just said, that, that angle. Either, look, you know, I might be looking directly up your nose, for example. Or, right. Yeah. So I've seen you in a, a great variety of poses. So I think um, it's just interesting to me that that's one of the places where your brain has gone in terms of versatility as opposed to contextually how to make something unique or different, which... Very well put. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. well, it's something I really appreciate. What I see now, my students do... Now, when I teach my workshops, I provide the portraits. Yeah. Uh, so they're going to start off on the right foot with, with, with every portrait, you know, like a, typically in a, in a three-day workshop, we'll do three portraits. But as soon as I lead them on their own devices, sometimes I'll say, okay, like if it's the four-day workshop, okay, on the fourth day, you can do your own. And as much as I talk about it, they take the most boring pictures. Oh. Um, mm. You know, if you're going to work from a photograph as a watercolorist or any medium, learn how to be a, an exciting, creative photographer. Oh, don't don't follow the usual. Well, gee, I'm just going to shoot straight at the face or um, I'm not going to have any dramatic, uh, uh, you know, drama on the face or dramatic lighting. That's what I have problems getting through to them. Um, is there anything else that you would like that you think portrait artists should know or should take note of? And we're talking about people who see a lot. They're, they're really they're really all in these folks. I don't know what it is about Britain, you know, about the program itself or about, you know, the people who are following the program, but it's a really robust community of of painters there, which is uh, I wish Oh, what well, You know, if if, if I I'm I never like to set myself up as mm. Well, gee, Dave, David's the top dog here. No, no, no. I'm always online seeing what people do. Um, I end up wanting to do what I want to do, but I see what other people do. And there are plenty of artists there that are extremely expressive. Um, and I'll, you know, and there's some little thing I like about what they're doing, then I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll incorporate that. Um, I used to tell my students a lot, um, hey, go online. I mean, we've got this, we've got, we're in this powerful era of the computer. Go online and, 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 and see what other artists do. For me, the third rail is when technology enters the room. And yes. I, I use technology in my studio because there are reasons why I use technology in my studio. Oh, we all do. Thank you. 
I have not met a professional artist who does not. No. So why is it, why do people put their heads down? Why do people say it's cheating? Why do people say, what, what, what the heck is that all about? Well, look, look, and, and you, you know what? I mean, you go all the way back to the Renaissance and they were, uh, you know, some of the yeah. artists were using camera obscures. That was their, their trade secret. Yes. You know, uh, Bacchus is holding the, sh the, the, the chalice of wine up, but wh <laughs> why are they always left-handed? That's because the image is flopped in a camera obscura device. <laughs> but um, so what was your question? Yeah. I forgot. I went well, off. I, think I got my on question, my soapbox. My, but I think my question when I ask someone of your stature, because I, I'm in a certain stature. I, I, I know who I am. I know what my stature is. But when I'm talking right. to someone who is in the worlds that, that, uh, that, that are far, far above where I am, I have wondered about this issue of technology and whether it is frowned upon or whether it is, I don't want to call it a dirty little secret, but when I have gone to people at your level and visited them in their studios, they have these devices in their studios that may, may not be what they're using to teach that day. Very seldom do they bring in a piece of technology to teach with, but it's there. And that tells me that they are working artists and they have to make a living or they want to make a living. And in order to make right. a living, you have to be successful. You have to turn out consistent product and you have to be as efficient as possible. And technology right. to do that. And I, so yes. for me, the way you get to the end of the painting is the way you get to the end of the painting. And that's, I just, I just wish that uh... I, I I tell, yeah the the problem the problem with uh, uh, teaching portraiture my California vibe style and in my advertising I always tell people hey listen you you don't need to even know how to draw a portrait drawing is important it gives you a keen sense in your eye and that does affect your painting but you don't have to know how to draw a portrait in my workshop because I'm giving you the reference photograph and I'm giving you the outline tracing to trace. And during the workshop, I'll show you how you can do this yourself. The fun, the creativity comes in within the painting process, the mess around, the expressive colors, the different ways you can apply uh, paint to paper. That's where the creativity is. So if somebody thinks that that's cheating, well, to me, that's your problem. Bye-bye. I'm continuing to do what I want to do. Like and right now, I'm playing with something called, and it combines with mess around, called meandering line and wash portraiture. And I'll be teaching that this year. I'll be on the road teaching it. So that's, that's anyway. Okay. So, um, so I have one last question, and I want again, yes. people that the description, all of David's links are going to be in the description below, and throughout this interview, I will have edited uh, pictures of, of his work above us. And or is painting here as a human activity because we all seem to either want it or need it in some way? Voila, you just described it. It makes us painting, sculpture, poetry, music. It makes us happy. Yeah. We do it. Not a, I don't care how much a computer can, can imitate. People are always going to want to have that humanity of doing things themselves. You know, okay, so you can use AI and stay inside your hovel and, 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 and float down the Amazon. Or you may want to actually go to the Amazon and do it your damn self physically. Same thing in arts, in the arts. Oh, I'm sorry, I got a little excited no, there, but I, I truly I, believe it. Well, I'm glad you did get excited about it because, and that's that's maybe the best thing at all that I that I know for sure as an artist, which is it. It's not the it's not the end that makes me happy. It's the doing of it that makes me happy. Oh, absolutely. I have no 
possessive. Uh, uh, I haven't got a possessive bone in my body with my art. I'm constantly, it's the, I love the doing. Sometimes I'm really pissed off. I may use the F word when the painting goes awry, sure. but um, sure. all I'll do is I'll tear it up and I'll do another one. And boy, when it comes out good, I'm happy. And when I discover new things, like I'm playing around with this meandering line, um, that's my yeah. pleasure. Yes. I, I, yeah. I'd like to end, um, yeah. and, and especially for your viewers in Britain, I have online classes, California Vibe Style online classes. I, I'm producing one now. It, I, 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 still, I still think I've got maybe another month or two before I, I, I get it out. It's on a platform called Rizuku. And these courses are, are quite detailed. Um, I pride myself in producing really teaching uh, videos. And, um, and, and they range from a low of 45 to $85 a course. And um, as long as I pay my Rizuku bill, uh, there's, there's no need to worry about finishing it. You can go at your own speed. And they'll stay on your computer. They they don't go away. So it's it, it, it it's it's a great way to learn, and I think a great way to learn without spending a lot of money. Yeah, that's from a your piggy bank. That is a tremendous value, and very very different from. Um, it's all I can say is I I have taken classes with David, and I just have to tell you all, it is not the same as what you've done when you've taken a class with someone else or when you have downloaded a video to watch and you have a very passive experience. That's not what this is. You will feel like you're in the room with him and you will feel the energy and it will move your work and worth every single penny. So thank you so much for doing this with me. And especially we had to do some troubleshooting at the beginning, which was um, so just <laughs> to get to set up exactly where he wanted to. You can see the work behind him. But as I said, I will be putting his work all throughout. And, um, and I really encourage you to, to visit him because um, you're, he will change your life. He'll change your life. And that's, that's something. <laughs> So well, well, and thank you for inviting me. This is this is great. It was it's super enjoyable, and I love I love your questions, and I love answering them. Oh, thanks. Okay, okay. thanks again. Thank you. Take care. And bye, Joe. I'm gonna go mess around. <laughs> okay, mess around. I am bye -bye. too. Bye bye. Bye bye.